Hello guys, today I'm going to show you how to laser engrave multiple items of the same thickness. Today we're doing cutting boards and I'm going to show you how to do that right now. Stick around. What I have here is a hardwood cutting board. This is a hardwood quality thinner, but it's quality hardwood cutting board, not a bamboo cutting board. I wouldn't recommend a bamboo cutting board. And this method that I'm about to show you actually took me a long time to figure out how to do it. And uh, well, I own footstepsinthepast.com and we've been using and doing lasering and engraving for uh, oh, probably five, six years now. And I work probably 80 hours a week on my YouTube channel and two hours a week laser engraving, I guess. Or is it the other way around? I don't know. It doesn't have to be cutting boards. It can be any semi-flat surface of the same height if you have multiples. We do a lot with, uh, we'll do, we'll cut out uh, or circles and maybe lay those out and laser engrave those. Uh, or say we have different shapes of cutting boards. The same method works for all of those. As long as everything is the same thickness, it'll work perfectly fine. And it fits within the perimeters of your laser, of course. Uh, make sure you know the exact measurements of whatever it is. I buy these in bulk. And I'll tell you a little bit about that later, where I get these and uh, how you guys could uh, buy some bulk and save some money uh, here towards the end of the video. So stick it around. So I'm going to actually show you uh, steps in Corel Draw. Uh, I'm going to actually show you steps in my graphics designing software. We'll touch base with already works. Uh, I use Corel Draw, so I'm going to start showing some Corel Draw. If you guys want to see more examples in graphics design, I'm more than capable of showing that to you. Um, so we're going to go, and I'm going to check out that new software. Uh, that I've used. Let me know how that looks. It actually should make my videos much better for you guys. Um, I don't know. It's new, new graphics software I've never used before. So I'm going to show that to you right now. Okay guys, so what I have pulled up here, I'm using CorelDRAW and again I'm just showing you how to do multiples of an object at the same time so you can do more of a mass production on your machines. Uh, the machine I'm running on is my blue laser is what I call it. It's a 600 by 900 uh, millimeter machine and it's an 80 watt power. And I'm just gonna lay out four of these little cutting boards. And the manufacturer told me they were eight inch by 12 inch cutting boards. But you'll see here they were probably manufactured in a different country that uses a metric system and they just round up. So they really were 11.811 by 7.874. We want to make sure we have a true representation of the cutting board. That way, uh, just make sure you measure them. <laughs> Don't take their word for it. Otherwise, you had 8 by 12 and your uh, machine would be, this would be off. So I just made a representation and I even put where the little slot goes here for us. So I'm going to go ahead and take this black outline and we'll lay out. I'm just going to do four for the sake of this video. I don't want my engraving to take all day long for you guys. All right, let's get them lined up. All right, we got them to be uh, black right now. Black for my machine is set to cut eighth inch plywood. We don't want to do that. I'm actually going to change all of these to two 155 points green. Now, if you're using already works, you have to work an RGB scale. You'll see right over here. I'm working RGB 255 points, and that changes to this. So my settings for green is 60. I'm sorry, 25% power, 100 millimeters a second, and that's a cut. So what it's going to do is just run a mark around the machine here. And this is this is what I'm doing here. Just once you see it, you'll be like, man, that's so simple. Uh, so we'll just just keep watching here and I'll show you what to do. So let's go ahead and run this right now Actually, let's save this export it and you see I've already actually saved it. I've been working on this a couple times huh. Okay Okay, so now we're gonna run this green outline What I'm gonna take is a piece of scrap plywood that's cut the size of my laser bed here You see this one had an issue right? right in there where we actually marked it to score instead of cut through so this is the perfect piece so let's get the machine loaded on turned on and get the um, green outline loaded up in the machine whenever you're running an engraving you want to make take that in consideration before you run the engraving that you need enough extended space for the head to stop um, so i always take my laser head and i move it in just a couple of millimeters and i set my origin there so that way if it comes back to stop it's can pass, it can pass the origin to slow the laser head down and you're not going to get that error. As long as 
what you're engraving doesn't extend all the way to the left as much as it does to the right. So it's just something to consider where you're setting this up. So I got that down, I got it focused. Okay, so we're into RD Works here. And what we're going to do is we're going to import the first um, the first cut here, the green outline that we just did. And I don't think you can see my splash screens here. I've got to figure that out. Anyway, blue machine and green. So this machine, I try to put it at 100 millimeters a second, 25% power. This is not the computer I normally run this off of, so my settings may not be right, but the computer that I run the laser off, that would be the setting, and it's set to a laser cut. So we can open that splash screen up. I'm not sure if you can see that or not. But, um, so that's my green cut, uh, and that's just going to do a really light mark. I recommend that you never, ever run your machine below 20%. In fact, I don't like to go below 25% and then never ever over 80% and I actually don't like to go over 65% you'll see I run 65% for most of my hot stuff um, so let's go ahead and uh, run this and you can see what's going on right now okay so this particular this is a, the new interface for for uh, the, the RD works controller so I'm going to do um, menu go to file and I just save it over default and here it is, it's my settings, and now we're going to frame it. Frame it. Make sure it's not going to hit my camera. Here we go. So I'm going to give you a little tip here on what I'm what we're using to engrave. I got the green line marked out on the um, on the machine, and what I'm going to be running is well, believe it or not, I don't make 100% of everything in our shop from scratch. Uh, we just don't have the time. So these cutting boards we pick up, I buy them in bulk from uh, Bradshaw International, which you can do if you buy a thousand units or more. Uh, you can buy from them, uh, or actually these are just good cook cutting boards that you can purchase from Dollar General. These are not the cheap bamboo boards, these are hardwood boards. These are closer to, you'll probably pay closer to $14, $15 for these. They're the hardwood boards. I don't recommend you do bamboo. You can laser engrave bamboo, but it's going to be all uneven. Um, so let's get these set up. I'm, oh, first of all, we got this little blood, blood groove around the edges here. And uh, we're going to engrave the side that doesn't have the groove. So this is the decorative side. And then the customer will still be able to use this side for cutting and chopping whatever they might want to use. And it'll still stay pretty on the back. So I'm going to open up all of these and we'll get them on the machine. As I'm opening these, I realized I said that we don't make everything here 100% by hand or from scratch. I want to reemphasize that the only things we do not make are these particular cutting boards, we do make cutting boards. So these particular cutting boards, and uh, there's rolling pins and wooden coat hangers that we do not make from scratch. We just put the laser etching into them. Uh, as far as our wood signs go, they are 100% handmade uh, from scratch. So we'll take these unwrapped. It takes forever. So now I'm going to bring in my images that we're doing, which I've already got four laid out and actually have done this. So I'm really actually just right ahead of you guys here. That's quite all right. So here's these images I'm gonna run. These are just fairly popular images that people like that we sell in our store. Let's delete all those because I'll be wrong. So it's very important that we don't move these outlines here. Don't accidentally move them. You nudge them one way or another, you're going to throw everything off. So let's go ahead and before we get into this, I'm going to switch my outline to back to, I always go to black, just a little trip. You go to black, it zeroes out your RGB scale here and you can tell it what color you want to be. Mine, I'm going to tell it to be red. On my machine, red is set at acknowledge it's there, but ignore it, don't do anything with it. Let's just kind of place these so they kind of look nice in here. And I will use the computer to straighten them up in just a second. Okay. And boop. 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 
I could just get into some tutorials on Corel Draw if you guys are interested. I have had some requests on how to do photos in Wood. I can go over those. Uh, if you guys want to see them, just comment below. Uh, these three here are JPEGs. They're actually not uh, vector images. This one's a vector image. You can see I have an outline. It's actually a blue outline. So on my machine, blue outline to engrave these. I actually jumped my blue, blue outlines to my engraving setting. And uh, I, I have it set for 65% power, 375 millimeters a second. Uh, so it'll run those. And I actually have my bitmap set at the same. Now, if you're going to do, M, uh, I'm sorry, if you're going to be doing photos and wood, it's really an art to get into figuring out the settings for that. And you really got to change around for almost every piece of wood or tile or glass or whatever it is you might be doing. So let's go ahead and run this one right now. Actually, I have to save it first again. I'm sitting here pretending like I run them right now. Or really, I'm just recording this all at the same time. All right, that's it for the computer work. So let's go and check out the finished product. Okay, so you can see the resemblance of the cutting board here, 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 and here. That is our green um, outline that we laid out. And we're gonna get these ready to do the um, cutting boards. Like I said, we wanna do the smooth side not the side with the groove. So we're just going to lay those out referencing here to here. Just line them right up. Be careful not to move this piece of wood. If you move it, you have ruined and you will have to start over. Okay, so now we got the uh, green outline on there and I think you guys get an idea of what I'm going about to do here. So let's go ahead and open up the engrave here and I will show you the settings on the engraving. Why aren't you opening? There we go. So I have my uh, outlines on red, which over here I have output. Let's see, yeah, let's see, on red, let's start with red. So output, no. So make sure the output is on no, not yes, but no. The settings here doesn't matter because it's not going to put output. What that's doing is the laser is recognizing that the red is here, but it's just going to ignore it when it goes to um, uh, process what we're about to send to it. And my laser section, I like to have set to three, I'm sorry, 375 millimeters a second, 65% power. Again, this is not the actual computer that I run the machine off of. I'm solely just showing you how to do this uh, so you can get a better idea of how to do this and how to run RD Works. Because when I first started, it probably, it, it's embarrassing, but it probably took me about two years to figure out how to get to, get to this point because I had no guidance and it was so simple when I figured out how to do it. I just can't believe that it took me so long. I was processing one at a time before that, believe it or not. Uh, let's go ahead and go up to bitmap. And it's also a laser scan. 375, 65, 65. You do not have to run these um, at 65. You can slow it down. I just like a really deep engraving. I don't want my engravings to look cheap and chintzy and lightweight. When you get them, they need to look really good. And I really need to use that, that too. And, and the, the customer nearly needs to get their money's worth on these. Uh, and make sure the entire time you do this, you're not moving any of the outlines because if you do that the whole thing is messed up so let's go ahead and download this to the machine by clicking the download button here and then uh, we'll go over there and pick it up on the machine and i will show you uh the final result okay so this next piece here we need to focus to the top of this cutting board and i used to have these issues where I would accidentally press origin right after I moved it. And you don't want to press origin. If you press origin, you messed up and you're going to have to start over. So let's go down and I'm going to focus. This one does not have an autofocus. I think they are a total waste of money. So we focused it there and now we move the head. We want to return it to home. This controller, you just press escape, escape. Now it's back exactly where it was. So let's go ahead and run this engraving. It's ready to go. Okay, it's in the memory. File, default, you can see it populating here, I think. And we got it here. Now, on my rolling pins, I'm not sure if you can see this. On my rolling pins, I engrave at 175, 65. And uh, we need to do this not so deep. 
uh, rolling pins are separate, so they both share the uh, blue color, which I, I don't find confusing, but the people running my machines during the day sometimes get tripped up by that. Oops. So you, to change those on the machines, enter, enter, find the color you want, the FN or function button, and then you can change the uh, height of the, the, um, the, the speed. I'm going to keep the heat the same. So raise, I run at 375, 65, 65, and then enter, enter. And you can see my settings here. So we're ready to go. Enjoy the ride. Okay, I think you guys seen that run enough. Uh, we'll come back and visit this in about an hour. I'm guessing that's about how long this will take to engrave these four cutting boards, set up my current settings. Uh, we could have uh, went in there and figured out just exactly how long they're gonna take, but personally, I didn't care because I have nothing ran behind this. I'm here in the evening by myself right now, so none of my, nobody working for me is looking to run the machine straight after me. Um, okay, I'm gonna go work on uh, editing my YouTube video for you guys. See you in a couple of seconds. Okay, I just got the chime for the machine, so we know that uh, it's done. So I'm gonna take a look at it before I show you, just to make sure that there's anything up and it's good enough to show you. I'm surprised myself. I did look good enough to show you guys. It's amazing. Pull this out like a deck of cards, just so I can get my shot for your thumbnail that made you click on this because it's handsome man with a bunch of weird old cut cords here. Look at this. There we go. So I just showed you how to do multiples of the same things on one engraving, so you can run off and go work in the uh, same room. Don't lose your laser. <laughs> Don't leave your laser. They can't catch fire. So I'm smoking. Uh, you can get most make the most money or get the most product that's what it is get the most productivity out of your machines so I'm Jay this is my to-do list and this is probably gonna be my thumbnail like this check it out I don't remember what I was gonna say but I'm gonna say it right now I don't remember <laughs>